Greetings from Matinic Island off the coast of Maine. I'm Sterna Paradisia, soon to be your favorite Arctic tern. I just know it. I'm going to read you a special story about my species. There are many of us Arctic terns who choose to use a few islands off the coast of Maine to raise our young each summer. We don't fly further up into Canada or the Arctic Circle. It's pretty special here in Maine. Our friends at the Maine Coastal Islands National Wildlife Refuge work hard every summer to keep our islands predator free so we can nest successfully. Hey, did you know that these refuge islands support over 95% of my species of Arctic terns in the lower 48 states? That makes us pretty special here in Maine. The book I'm reading today is called Searching for Sky, an Arctic tern adventure written and illustrated by Gail Clark. Thank you to Gail for giving me permission to read and share this story. And by the way, Gail has a bunch of other great stories about other animals, but I think you'll agree that this one is the best. Arctic terns make a long journey, so of course it makes for a long story. So grab a blanket and settle into a comfortable place as I read you the story, Searching for Sky, an Arctic Tern Adventure. On the on the Arctic shore, on a clear spring day, two small speckled eggs in the stony nest lay. Mum and Dad Tern kept them warm day and night, watching in case there was danger in sight. And at last, a sound like a tap or a scratch told them their babies were ready to hatch. The newly hatched chicks were fluffy and small. They didn't have any real feathers at all. They sat in the nest with their beaks open wide so their parents could pop something tasty inside. And those two baby turns ate and slept all day long until they had grown both healthy and strong. The parent turns thought that their young ones were clever, the smartest and best looking baby turns ever. Mum decided to call them Pilot and Sky. Great names, agreed Dad, when they know how to fly. And in a few weeks, the baby turns grew, their fluffiness went, and gray feathers came through. A black feather cap appeared on each head. You are growing up fast, their proud mother said. Tomorrow we'll start to teach you to fly. Father Turn added to Pilot and Sky. They began the next day. Dad called, just follow me and flap your wings hard while I count up to three. Mom held her breath, not a word did she say, as her young ones took off in a wobbly way. She peeked through their wing as they circled around and smiled as they both came back safely to ground. Fantastic, she cried. Father agreed, a little more practice is all that you need. Their flying improved and in just a few days, they could catch their own food in a number of ways. Diving into the sea to spear fishes to eat and capturing insects in flight for a treat. I think that we're ready, Dad said one fine day. In a very short time, we must be on our way. On our way where, Pilot asked, quite excited. Can we come too? Have we both been invited? Everyone's going, young and old too, replied Father Turn. It's what we turns do. When darker days come, we must start our migration, flying thousands of miles to the new destination. From North Pole to South Pole, we follow the sun, halfway around the world to where summer's begun. The turn babies listened with eyes opened wide, and when Dad had finished, they cheerfully cried, How long will it take and when do we start? Can we leave now? I can't wait to depart. Slow down, said Mum, smiling. We first have to make a plan and decide on which route to take. Your father and I are meeting tonight with a large group of turns who will join in our flight. You two stay here and be good little chicks. Don't go out on your own and no silly tricks. The parents flew off. Skye waited a while. Then her face lit up with a mischievous smile. She stretched out her wings, rose into the air, calling out to her brother, come if you dare. Come back, Pilot cried. We promised to wait. But Skye didn't hear him. His words were too late. I'll be back very soon, she called in delight. And flapping her wings, she flew out of sight. Pilot sat in the nest as he waited for Skye, but she didn't come back and the hours drifted by. He started to worry he knew there were dangers. 
Mom and Dad weren't around to protect them from strangers. Then at last, the beating of wings made it clear to the worried young turn that his parents were near. They landed and Pilot told them the tale. Mom started to cry and Dad looked quite pale. We must search for our baby, there's no time to rest till Sky is back with us and safe in the nest. They searched through the night and all the next day, but where Sky had gone to, no one could say. They circled the skies, they asked all around, but wherever they looked, she couldn't be found. The parents were sad. It was as they had feared, their adventurous baby had just disappeared. After several more days, Father Turn shook his head. A decision like this is not easy, he said. We have to consider the other turns too, and thousands of birds cannot wait for a few. Oh, but what about Sky? Pilot cried in dismay. We can't leave her here. She won't find the way. The tears filled his eyes and ran down his beak as Mom looked on sadly, unable to speak. Perhaps, Dad continued, Sky has been found by a flock that's already Antarctica bound. If she's gone with them, there might be a way for our family to be reunited one day. But we must keep up our spirits and hope for the best, letting luck and good fortune take care of the rest. Summer came to an end. The turns knew they must go before the arrival of ice, sleet, and snow. The long journey south would take 90 days. There was no time to waste or on further delays. They were ready to go. They had made preparations. It was time for the longest of all birds' migrations. Leaving the Arctic Circle, they'd fly for hundreds of miles day and night through the sky. Till hungry, exhausted, and ready to drop, they'd reach the Antarctic, and there they would stop. And for three summer months, the turns would remain before heading back to the Arctic again. Turns make this marathon journey each year, so throughout their lives it will soon become clear they fly thousands of miles. How many? Don't swoon. More than three times the distance from Earth to the moon. Seeing more daylight hours from the time of their birth than all other creatures that live on the Earth. The day for departure had finally come. The cold air was filled with a low whirring hum. As beating their wings, they rose into the sky and the turns waved the Arctic a cheerful goodbye. Stay close to us, pilot, were dad's kindly words. We'll protect you from dangers and unfriendly birds. Don't stray from the group, stay well within sight on your very first marathon pole to pole flight. I will, pilot answered, his voice not quite steady, whispering softly. I hope that I'm ready. The mid-North Atlantic was where they were going, and thanks to the helpful winds that were blowing, they completed this stage of their journey quite fast and could feed on fresh fish and plankton at last. Once rested and fed, they flew on past the shores of a small group of islands called the Azores. The dangers were many, the journey was long, the icy cold winds were frightening and strong. And once in the evening, a cry loud and clear warned all the turns that danger was near. What's happening, cried Pilot, filled with alarm. Don't worry, Dad said, you will come to no harm. Some large gulls are near, they may try to attack. There are only a few and we turns can fight back. And as Pilot watched with eyes open wide, he stopped feeling, feeling scared and his heart filled with pride as Dad and the other turns made it quite clear to the fierce group of gulls that they weren't welcome here. The turns were much smaller, but thanks to their skills, they frightened the gulls with their sharp pointed bills. With a beating of wings, the gulls flew away. The turns all cheered loudly, loudly and shouted, Hooray! Continuing south for many more miles, they finally came to the Cape Verde Isles, where each Arctic turn had a hard choice to make. Which of the two different routes should it take? Half of the group would continue to fly down the African coast, while the others would try to cross the Atlantic and fly farther still, as they followed the eastern coast of Brazil, till all of the turns joined together once more, coming safely to land on an Antarctica shore. On the Weddell Sea ice packs, they happily found a safe summer home in a good hunting ground. Pilot, we've made it, Mom and Dad gasped as the huge group of terns laid, landed safely at last. 
Our marathon flight is now over and done. You are such a brave turn. We're so proud of you, son. But no answer came, not even a peep. Pilot, exhausted, had fallen asleep. It was now time to rest, and on cold, starry nights, the turns told each other of long-distant flights, of adventures they'd had, of dangers they'd th seen, of routes they had chosen, of places they'd been. Then Pilot's mom, with a tear in her eye, told them the story of how they'd lost Sky. All of the turns, young and old too, said how sorry they were. It was all they could do. But this isn't quite where our turn story ends. Several days later, one of their friends came to see Mom and Dad because he had heard an incredible tale of a young baby bird, lost and alone one night she'd been found by a kind pair of turns when she fell to the ground. She was tired, she was hungry, the pair did their best to give her good food and plenty of rest. Then finally, when she was healthy and strong, they flew from the Arctic and took her along. Could this be Skye, who'd been lost months ago before leaving the Arctic? It just might be so. Now his parents thought Pilot was safely in bed, but he'd heard every word their new friend had said. We've got to go now, he excitedly cried, flapping about his eyes open wide. Their friend added cheerily, I'll lead the way. It won't take us long. I am happy to say. And as he had promised, they landed quite soon, finding their way by the light of the moon. A small group of terns was standing around, anxiously waiting for them on the ground. And there, in the middle, as plain as could be, was the happiest sight they ever could see. Sky, whispered Mum in a voice soft and clear. As Sky flew to her wings and the crowd gave a cheer, crying and laughing, they all hugged each other, brother and sister, father and mother, their friends, old and new, all were delighted. The family of Turns was at last reunited. And that is our story of Searching for Sky, an Arctic Turn adventure. Happy adventures to you as well.